we're going to look at um, verse 30. Ezekiel 22, verse 30. King James says this, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Now, I want to read that from the uh, New Living Translation. So if, if you have that, put it on the screen if you don't happen to be holding that translation in your hand. Uh, New Living, uh, Ezekiel 22, verse 30. He says, I looked for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards the land. I searched for someone to stand in the gap in the wall so I wouldn't have to destroy the land. But I found no one. Now, this is the prophet Ezekiel. And he's prophesying by the Spirit of God, and he says, I looked for someone to rebuild the wall of righteousness. So obviously, if he had to look for someone to rebuild the wall of righteousness, then the wall of righteousness obviously had had some damage. The wall of righteousness obviously had had some terror. It had had a breach because it needs to be rebuilt. Now, now y'all, y'all, y'all remember, you know, believers know uh, about the children of Israel, right? You know about Jerusalem, right? The city, Jerusalem. And Jerusalem always had a wall around it, right? Had a wall around it. And uh, the, the, the believers, the children of Israel, who were God's, people were inside that wall. Now, God was never concerned about what was going on on the outside. God was always concerned about what was going on on the inside of that wall. The reason he was concerned about what was going on in, on the inside of that wall is because God know that as long as his people are doing what they should do, then no one can penetrate that wall. No one can come through that wall that should not be there. And y'all know that that wall was penetrated on more than one occasion. So you ask the question, why? Well, the reason why is because those that God has set apart for his holy use, they were not upholding the wall of righteousness. And so the wall was scaled, the wall was penetrated, the wall was damaged, the wall was breached. And as a result, all kind of mess came in. So there is a wall of civility in this nation there is a wall of a fear of God, a reverence for God in this nation. There is a wall of justice in this nation. There is a wall of just dignity and respect for humankind. And it has been breached. Justice is no longer upheld on the same standard for all. You see, one of God's concerns about those children in Israel inside that wall of Jerusalem was corruption. See, corruption contaminates. Corruption ruins things. Corruption allows all type of sin and perversion and, and unjust corruption. When the wicked rule, the people mourn. And so because that is allowed and the only ones that can uh, prevent that from taking place, you got to understand, is the righteous. Now, so we fast forward to our day, and we being 
there, there in the book of 2 uh, Corinthians 5.17, it, it says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 21 says, And God has made him, speaking of Jesus, to be sin for us, for us who knew no sin. Jesus didn't know any sin. Uh, come on, y'all. Are any, are any Christians in here? He didn't know any sin. But he became sin for us so that we would become the righteousness of God in him. Now, if we have become the righteousness of become simply means that you were not that before. So then if we have become the righteousness of God in him, we are the righteous ones. We are the ones who make the change. We are the one who turn things around. We are the one who set the standard. And, and, and when we set the standard, we hold the line. But that wall has been breached. It has been breached. Listen. There's absolutely no way that you would have thought 10, 15 years ago that they would allow in our school system for kids, children, to be indoctrinated concerning their gender. The wall has been breached. I said the wall has been breached. Come on, saints. You're the holy ones. You're the ones set apart. We are the ones who make the change. The wall of righteousness. There is absolutely no way 5, 10, 15, maybe 5, 10, 15 years ago that our school system would allow, allow trans to perform in front of our children. Absolutely no way. The wall has been breached. I said the wall has been breached. And we are the one who turn it around. To be honest with you, it should never have taken place. But now that it has, we are the one. Listen, God's hand is still on this nation. Don't, get, don't, don't be misunderstood. I said, this hand is still on this nation. Look, God says that, oh my goodness, I keep my covenant to a thousand generations. Look, I don't know about you, but I'm a, look, I'm in the covenant of God. You're in the covenant of God. He's keeping it. He's keeping it for me. He's keeping it for you. He's keeping it for this country. He's keeping it for the righteous. He doesn't change his mind. Now the wall has been breached. But here, Ezekiel says that the wall of righteousness must be rebuilt. Now, we have a tremendous responsibility, saints, but it also is an awesome opportunity to get in our place. I looked for a man, there's no gender preference there. I looked for a man who would rebuild the wall of righteousness. I searched for a man who would stand in the gap of the wall. And the sad part was, I found none. Everybody say, hold on, God. I'm that person. Say, hold on, God. I'm that righteous one. Say, hold on, God. Not on my watch. Say, hold on, God. The land will not be destroyed on my watch. Listen. We are here to plug holes. I said, we, saints, are here to plug holes. And God is going to speak to some of you about specific things that you are to do. But we all 
a call to watch and pray. All of us. And so, oh my Jesus. So how is this wall going to be rebuilt? Turn to uh, Second Chronicles. I'm going to just take a couple of more minutes and we're going to do business. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Pastor Andy referenced this, uh, this uh, verse on Sunday, but we're going to look at it again. Second, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Reading this from the Amplified Classic Edition, it says this, If my people, that's the righteous one, those are the saints. Those are the ones who cause change to take place. If my righteous ones, we'll just say, who are called by my name, how many in the room tonight <laughs> identify with being God's people called by his name? All right. You just volunteered. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray, seek, crave, and require of necessity my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. My eyes, God says, now my eyes will be open, and my ears attentive to prayer offered in this place, in this place, in this place. Look, when, uh, uh, when God spoke to Pastor David over 30 years ago, and he says, go to Las Vegas and start a church. Go to Las Vegas and start a church. We are the church. And this is the place where God's ear is open. This is the place where God's eyes are open. In this place. I said, this place. Say it, this place. I apologize if I sound angry. But listen, I am completely mad at the devil. And, and, and if you have a problem with me being mad with the devil, then I'm going to give the altar call. And you can get saved. Okay? So, this is, this is, uh, this is the place... Uh, where uh, prayers are offered up in this. Y'all remember when, when, when Jesus, he, he uh, went into the temple and, and uh, he kicked over tables and, and uh, you know, whipped a few people. <laughs> and he said, he says, uh, this is not a den of thieves, but this is to be a house of what? Prayer. This is a house of prayer. Your house is a house of prayer. But this is the house where we come corporately together and we get some business taken care of. Can y'all say amen?